Colin asked me, he's very persistent, a couple of months ago to, to come and speak at this event. I didn't really know what it was about, but it was on the idea that they're looking for some good practices or some ideas that we could lean on or look to. And I think this morning we've got plenty of insight into um, fuel poverty and what's the definition of fuel poverty. And then Brian there obviously recent on, on the actual housing stock. Energy Cloud, I'll give you a bit of black. My name is Derek Roddy. I'm a co-founder of Energy Cloud. It's an organization um, with members in it. But my previous and my main role, I'm an entrepreneur. I built a technology company and we built smart thermostats and we built smart immersion controllers. So my background is in deploying technology. And about seven years ago, we got our first introduction to social housing with our technologies. We deployed 4,000 smart thermostats into my local authority, Loud County Council. So basically a local authority, their entire housing stock, we put in a smart thermostat. And as we were doing those installations, we got to see a completely different world uh, on how people were using heat for their home and their hot water. So between heating home, your home and hot water, it represents about 80% of your energy spend. And we had a first-hand insight into how people were spending that uh, money on, on energy. What was staggering was that people in social housing sector, if you probably, were typically taking one hour of heat a day. So they were turning on the heat system for one hour and that was it. So the one hour of comfort or maybe two hours of comfort a day. And on their hot water tanks, um, the mad thing was they were all over the place. There was immersion that's been left on permanently. Um, some people had gone for 25, 30 years and never had them switched off, but they couldn't afford their energy bills by this little tank was bubbling away in the corner. So during that process, um, over the last five years, we've learned a huge amount. We've actually technology now 20,000 social houses in, in Ireland, and we've been able to get a really, really good insight into what's what's happening. That got my R&D team developing technology to look at the hot water tanks. And when we had it all built, we realized there's no way to get it really deployed um, because you need to look at scale. And that's when Energy Cloud was born out of an event like this, where I was sitting in the audience at a social uh, Entrepreneurs of the Year Awards, and it was a social enterprise came up on stage. They were called Food Cloud, we stole their name, <laughs> and they were there to talk about food poverty. And the idea being that they would visit local shopping centres and local malls in the evening, pick up the food that was about to go to eat, take it back into a warehouse, and redistribute it to people in, in food poverty. They had delivered, I think, 100 million deals in five years or six years of their startup. And I'm sitting in the audience going, well, we have a huge amount of surplus wind energy that we dump. I wonder, could we create a not-for-profit, a social enterprise, and redistribute uh, surplus wind and give it to people in fuel poverty? So when home that night, stole the concept of food cloud, changed the name, clean energy rather than food, and this is what we come up with energy cloud. So that's the background of what we're going to talk about for the next, how long have we got those? We have about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. So with that in mind, um, I'll give you some of the key stakeholders because when you're tackling a problem like this, Brian, you mentioned there in your last comment, uh, fabric first. So there's a different way of looking at that. We dump about 100 million euro of energy. Actually, over the next five years, there's a chance it could be up to a billion euro of zero carbon energy will be just spilled and if people want to know what's happening there and um, basically a wind farm is spinning there's no demand so they just switch it off okay so it just doesn't produce but there could be a million people in ireland or across europe or across the world turning on a fossil fuel boiler to do something like heat up their hot water so that's the concept so when we were looking at this problem we were trying to say could we come up with a solution that could actually tackle that billion euro problem and how would we do it? And to do that, you have to look at the system. So we look from the wind farm, how the actual system works from the wind farm here, right through all the cables into your home and how would you actually solve that problem? And you'll see the key stakeholders here we have on the bottom um, are basically all the people, including the fabric, right along that value stream. So I just want to get in because the people, this is all about people, it's not about Derek here talking, it's about these people. 
and Noel Kniff here in the centre. Noel is now the CEO of the Irish Wind Energy Association. So Noel basically represents all or 90 something percent of all the wind farmers in Ireland and their production. So when we were looking at energy clouds concept, I approached Noel and asked him, by any chance would your wind farmers give their surplus energy to people in fuel poverty? It's a big ask because I know you want to sell it, but would you do it? And Noel went back and came, came back and said, in general, our wind farmers would be open to that idea. If they could give the people in poverty, they'd rather do that than see it wasted. So then I went and met Joe, who's a customer of mine, who's the director of um, property for Clearing Housing, the largest housing association. I met with Joe and asked Joe, would he be interested in some free energy that's coming off wind farms? And Joe said, yes, I would. So Joe and Noel met and we met in a hotel and we agreed we'd create a not-for-profit and both Noel and Joe became directors of Energy Cloud. So we had both ends of the cable, for want of a better word, as partners in Energy Cloud. And then we had to go and attack all the different key stakeholders. Owen Kennedy is the head of um, Airgrid operations in Airgrid. So Owen is a person who tells the wind farm to switch off. So Owen is a, a partner in Energy Cloud. We had Colin de Burke here, so ESB Group, own all the cables. Colin's a director on Energy Cloud. And then we had Stuart, who's SSC, one of the retailers. Stuart's out selling the energy, along with ESB, so you have two of the major retail energy companies that actually sell energy. So they're part of it. And then if you go through the list, we had Siobhan and Kingspan. So Kingspan are the largest fabric, one of the largest ones in Europe across the globe. Siobhan is the global marketing director. So it was a fabric first approach. We wanted to take um, Kingspan on board. And then Colin was the PR to pull us all together with, with a coherent um, voice. And then Kira's from Technology University in Dublin, looking at the actual research side of it. What are we going to learn from this and how could we help influence um, government policy? From my point of view, I suppose, when I approach a problem, it's more with the people and scale. So I call them love bomb trials because there's just so many trials out there that get so much love. But can you actually scale? And I've been around the world working with energy companies, that's the one thing that really annoys me. We do loads of projects, but they're not actually modeled to scale. And I wanted to try and see could this group of people come to the table and could we sit around the table and actually try and solve a scalable problem? So could we come up with a solution to solve it? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get uh, governments and the regulators to agree to let us use the cable at night time or off peak for free. It's already there. It's into all your homes. It's not been used. It's not busy. Could we use it for free? Could we use that infrastructure for free? Because as a homeowner, I'm in fuel poverty. I've already paid for it through my day to day bill. And rather than energy being wasted, could we use the infrastructure for free? So we're breaking all the rules of how energy markets work, but we're trying to get these people who run that energy system to come up with how to do it, if that makes sense. So the target, these numbers can get thrown around, is it 50 million, is it 100 million? What is the actual number of energy that gets wasted? And um, it's huge, it's absolutely massive, and it's going on one way. So the more wind farms we, we put, and solar farms across the globe, the more curtailment. And the reason for that is very simple. We don't, and we're not in control of the weather. So when the weather storm blows over a country, or the sun starts to shine, or cloud cover comes over, we're either on or we're off. And we're not in control of that. And the problem that's been happening around the globe is customers or people in fuel poverty are seen as the last people that you can worry about. They're, but they're sitting there with a demand, but they're not being asked to match that demand when, when, when the wind farms are blowing. So how do we bring that all together? And that was the ambition here for Energy Cloud. If we know there is 100 million, if you think about 100 million euros worth of retail energy. Actually, the senator recently in, in the Shannon in Ireland here, and the minister um, challenged whether that was 300 million euros worth of retail value energy wasted in one year. Um, and, and we have people who feel poverty. So if we get this right, we could be given 300 million euro back into the pockets of people in fuel poverty that can go and spend it on, on other items. 
and um, and that's the modelling that we've at uh, uh, Technology University have done. They've taken four hundred and sixty-one thousand homes. The definition again we talked about is that the number of people through poverty, where it's a lot of people. And if we had those, and we had that number of people, we could consume. Could we consume uh, that amount of energy? So could we consume it all? And I showed us in the slide in a couple of minutes. We think about eighty-nine to ninety percent of all curtailed energy that's wasted. Those homes would use it just in hot water in their hot water tank, not heat pumps, nothing else. Literally hot water to have a bath or a shower, and you could end up with one bath, one tank full of hot water a week if we spread it out over all those four to sixty thousand homes. So there's times when everybody gets it, and then we've got to ripple it around how people get that. But the ideal scenario would be once a week you get a tank full of hot water for free. That's the concept to get to get going. So how, how are we actually proposing it? And um, Brian, you mentioned giving away stuff for free doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get customers on, on board. But the concept here is quite straightforward. And um, if I ask you here today or people online, if you've got a hot water tank, how much hot water have you got in your tank? Does anyone know what hot water they actually have in their tank today? Some people might have the technology to do it, but 99% don't know. So what we're doing is we're going out to the homeowner and we're putting a piece of kit retrofit it onto existing tank and you can see for the first time ever what's in their tank so you can actually see the amount of hot water that's in their tank and that is a bit of a game changer and um, if we've done nothing else they'd be happy with that because for the first time you can actually just see i've got this amount of hot water or this amount of hot water but the concept is we give them this kit for free and once we're on that we're, we're on their immersion switch their electric switch then you were able to remotely control it when that switched. So we're not asking for any behavioural change. We're not asking for them to do anything different. Just do what you've always done. But there will be times when we'll actually give you a full tank of hot water and we'll let you know when we did it. Okay, so it automatically happen in the background and you get a free tank of hot water. And that's the pitch to the residents. We've gone out and, with, uh, and I'll talk with the pilot in a second. But this would be straightforward enough. I know from having deployed technology that if you get the customer proposition right, people will take free kit and um, there's not an issue there. But you've got to give them something back and we'll give them free, free energy. So that's the sort of letter we have. This is the key ingredient here. You need partners. So if anyone across Europe is looking at this, you have to engage with your energy companies from the get go, the retailers. So I've gone around, my role in Energy Cloud after Christmas was to talk to all the energy retailers that are in the sector and get a view whether they'd be willing to support Energy Cloud's ambitions with the facilitation Energy Cloud on the bill. So you can see here a draft sample bill where SSC sent out a bill to a citizen at the moment and here in the yellow box 242 units of free energy were delivered. So Energy Cloud over the last month, give you 242 kilowatts of free energy. And then that will be itemized on the bill, what it was worth, and you got it for zero. Okay, so it's zero carbon energy. And this is a big deal because energy companies don't like messing around with their bills. So we're literally twisting loads of arms and asking them to do it. And the idea that when we scale this up, it would become a part of your overall energy bill if you're in fear of poverty, that you would have an energy cloud line item on your bill. And um, the actual projects, the time, projects and how to work, COVID and uh, Energy Cloud in a partnership recently was launched by the Minister for Housing with the ambition of doing 50 homes and then we scale that up into COVID 8,000 properties. It's not really, from a technology point of view, it's not that difficult to do. What is difficult is getting all those stakeholders to agree they want to do it. And then if the workers are willing to do it, we figure out technically how to do it. So we've got to get everyone agreeing that they want to do it. And that's been the key ingredient. Clued have been a fantastic partner. And then recently, I didn't mention Gabriel in the original slide. Gabriel's role, Gabriel Dodge here in the photograph, Gabriel has come in. We had all the team built and we, we realized we needed an independent chairperson to come in and basically offer us a, uh, a vision and a direction of how to coordinate all these opinionated uh, geniuses around the table and what we should do next. So Gabriel was the former CEO of Board Nimona, 
to transition boiling water from foreign heat into a renewable um, company. This day, but Gabriel was the the start of that process. So we felt that we had someone with Gabriel's knowledge and transformation and transition to come in and chair. So he is now chairperson of Energy Clouds. We have a good independent chairperson to come in and lead and direct us going forward in the future. The actual proposition is dead straightforward. Uh, partnership could arrive into a house with an electrician, knock on the door, walk into your, your hot press or your, your room where your hot water tank is. We take off your old mechanical switch. We put on a new digital switch. We put sensors on your hot water tank. We can see what's happening in your tank when we leave and we're gone within one hour. And the homeowner can now control their hot water tank in an app or you can do it manually on the actual switch, but that's it. It's a it's an hour installed and we're done. And, and that's the key piece, quick, easy to do retrofit from one hour. The you can see here we've deployed we deploy it and the surface energy is available. We use the existing hot water tank. So if someone's into technology, they can use an app, see what's happening. If they're not, it doesn't matter. If you're working with a mechanical switch. And the target is to clear its 8,000 properties. We've got a lot of interest, um, we've done some promotion last year, and that's probably where you can pick up on it. So we've got a lot of interest from um, local authorities in Ireland and social housing um, across the UK. And we expect that we prove this to create a template that could be copy pasted across the globe. That's the concept here. And uh, where the pilot scheme, just finishing up the pilot scheme, we identify the houses, we're looking at existing hot water tanks. Um, there is a whole piece too, I'm very conscious of what Nigel was saying earlier on. There is who deserves the energy and who should and shouldn't get it. In my view, I don't really try and get too bogged down in that. Someone else with a lot more brains can figure out who should get it and shouldn't get it. But we have 100 million being wasted. So we spent a year trying to figure out who should and shouldn't get it. And we've dumped another 100 million of energy. And if we spend another year doing it, that'll be 200 million of energy wasted. So my view is just give it away and we'll worry about that. So we might use something simple like people who are in receipt of a fuel allowance automatically apply, and if we can expand it or reduce it, we do that. We don't want to get too bogged down much longer on who should and shouldn't get it. And we just got to go ahead and make it work. So that's it. There is a, the, sorry, the big change that happened in Ireland recently. The Irish government decided to give basically homeowners 400 billion back and from an energy side's point of view, we were trying to figure out how could we get technology deployed. And the government just rocked up and said, we'll just give you money back. So that could have paid for a technology deployment that would give people two to 400 million of discounts every year of their energy bills. So it's just trying to rethink how we do stuff. Um, and that's that's what we're trying to do in energy cloud. But I will say, um, look, some people have asked me, why, why, what would you have learned of the process? Getting the key people along the system in place. So every single organization, ESB, Airgrid, all grid up, there's always a pain in the ass entrepreneur or entrepreneur or person who wants to change those organizations. And we're just giving them a platform to actually do what they always want to do in Energy Cloud. And they're doing it with something that's already been wasted because it's already surplus and that's what we're doing. I hope, I hope I've covered everything off there.